Now, this is a, a topic that I know was covered on last week's episode of uh, the nonprofits. I really encourage any viewers who didn't catch it to take a moment and uh, and go back and watch that episode. I wanted to see if we could recreate any piece of that conversation because this is a topic that definitely needs to be discussed. Uh, and that, of course, is the tragic slayings in Atlanta of six sex workers recently targeted in large part, we believe, because of their race, because of the work that they were doing. And there's a, a lot that I want to get into here. What I, kinds of things can y'all share with us on this topic? I think one of the most important parts of this article is the fact that they were allegedly sex workers. Right. This is a, a complicated deep. thing as we're talking about massage parlors. I, I guess I should have mentioned we are specifically talking about an NPR article, Atlanta Killings, Sex Worker Advocate Sees Deadly Consequences of Overlapping Hatreds. Uh, and that will, of course, be in the or is already in the footnotes for this episode. Uh, but yeah. please, Rudy, continue. Yeah, there's already a stigmatization of Asian women in particular as being uh, fetishized, sexualized. There's this uh, stigma about, you know, being specifically a woman working in massage. I've known non-Asian women who work in massage who were uh, propositioned for sexual favors and they were just like, I, I mean, I'm talking about a Jehovah's Witness woman that I knew who worked in massage and uh, a client was just like, so when does the sex start? And she was like, get out, <laughs> leave. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I, mean I, I hear that, Rudy, and, and I definitely don't want to disagree, nor do I want to come in and declare anything over anybody or create facts when I don't have them. But I also have to acknowledge the type of massage parlor that this business is. We have oh, to yeah. acknowledge the uh, established criminal history. Criminal, of course, is not the same thing yeah. as wrong or bad. But the established criminal history uh, of these uh, of these locations. And I, I do think that we have to be not naive about the fact that this is, you know, a traditional rub and tug massage, that that is. Right very much a reasonable expectation at this establishment or these establishments. Right. I guess my only point in saying that is that there's sort of stigmatization all the way up the line for mm. these women that were, that were killed. It, you know, they're working in an industry that if you're a woman, it's automatically associated with sex. Sure. And then on top of that, they they probably were involved in that. And even if they weren't, they're Asian women. So they're already stigmatized as being, you know, fetishized and sexualized. And on top of that, they're just hated for even being perceived as sex workers, whether or not they actually were. Just the perception in and of itself is enough. Uh, there was, yeah. And, and there's been so much in the news lately about uh, uh, hatred against Asian people, not even, you know, Asian women in, in particular, but Asian people because of COVID, I guess. Like, I uh, I still don't understand that. And maybe it's just because I'm not a racist, but I, I, don't, I fully don't get it. <laughs> well, it's let not, me say at least COVID. a tiny bit. Yeah, exactly. It's not COVID. It's the president of the United States repeatedly saying China. You know, and, and pointing that finger and, yeah. you know, the Kung flu and all Those of this fingers like yeah. really offensive uh, rhetoric that demonizes Asian folks. Yeah, and that's I, 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 I guess I don't. Uh, it's not that I don't understand where that came from. I guess that I can't put myself in the mindset of hearing that and thinking that that's legitimate. Sure. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely their fault. Uh huh. Yep. I hate those guys. Like that doesn't that doesn't compute for me. Well, it doesn't compute because you're a thinking person and you <laughs> you care about other people and you don't label them based upon phenotypes, right, or national origin. But we talked about this on the show, and I'm really glad that we're on the show again talking about it because we left a lot on the table. We always do in the nonprofits. 
if you yeah. tune in, we've got a lot more to say than we get a chance to say in a short amount of time. And part of that right. is maybe having less articles. Like if there's anything frustrating about the nonprofits, it's how much we have to leave on the cutting room floor. Ugh, gosh. Well, and, and that's a, a conversation we, we had in post after the last epi the episode yeah. that I was on. I think that's part of the beauty. You know, you, you have four people, you crowd the space, you get a bunch of obnoxious people that like to talk, that have opinions, and then you all make them compete so that the best ideas or at least the loudest ones tend to rise to the top. I, I think, think there's think value think in that how, format. Do you think that's how, how it happens, Christy? Is that I the impression? I think it, I think that it is. That is the way is. I'm marketing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> when you that's see enough. how the sausage is made, I don't want to do that. To question it. <laughs> <laughs> as as the producer, I am going to command. I'm going to command everyone to tell me that that's not what I'm doing. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm really trying to get like we've got these all these interesting people with different perspectives, different takes on it. And I want to make sure everyone's getting it in. Uh, well, that's more of a Thursday thing. Everybody's getting it in. Yeah, that's yeah. Our everyone's show. getting Thanks it so in so much. <laughs> but um, but uh, it's Thursday somewhere, and right now it's in Austin, Texas. But um, uh. We talked about, okay, look, we talked about purity culture. To me, that's really where this one's at. I mean, the Asian spa thing, if these are, what did you call it? Rub and tug? Uh, yeah. That, I mean, that is a term, perhaps a pejorative one. I didn't one know that. I'd never heard that term. Mm -hmm. There, There is a, we talked about, we talked about purity culture, shame, the the black and white view that a lot of religious or let's just call it extremist groups have towards morality. There's this cosmic battle taking place all around you in a dimension that is infused in the dimension that you see right now, right? And you're either on the side of light or you're on the side of the abyss. You're literally and, describing my childhood. Yeah, and, and it's Sorry. spiritual warfare, right? Spiritual like that's the terminology. Warfare. You are, are at you war. A, are you a paladin or are you, what's the opposite of a paladin? Necromancer? A dark paladin? Dark paladin, a dragon <laughs> knight, and a demon, a demon swordsman. I don't know. You're not and, playing enough D and D. I was no, going to say not. the ACA needs a D and D show. <laughs> I'm going to run it. I'm going to start it. Make it so. But <laughs> you're, you're, there's no options for nuance, right? You and, and we talked about this in the show. I'll talk about that. We, I looked at the website for the crab apple. Was it Baptist Church? I mm -hmm. think it was. All right, fuck the Crab Apple Baptist Church. I mean, not to the extent that they've distanced themselves from their murderer who is a member of their community, because I would do that if I were in charge of that community. But the fact that I'm willing to bet a few pennies, because I don't have, you know, I'm not a gambling man, that the rhetoric that they have been shoving in that guy's face since conception onward has been this spiritual warfare. You were either you were either a paladin or you were a goblin king. I don't know, whatever. And, um, and, and the fact that as a human being, he woke up like all of us do every day with some form of imperfection, some sort of less than ideal sense of ourselves, right? A boner perhaps at the wrong time or something like that. And now this purity culture, the shame is upon him that if only he could just get right with God, that he could somehow be be fine with every with the world. But he fails every day, every moment of his life. He is a worthless, disgusting, putrid creature. And only through the saving grace of our the Lamb of God and all of his blood that's all over the place that he can be fine. And that works its way into a person's psyche. Right. Um, the church put that on him, May, not with the intention that he kills anyone or the intention that he kills himself or harms himself, but that there is this unrealistic expectation that you can actually live like that. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. We make mistakes constantly. We just try. We strive toward being more compassionate, more forgiving, more cooperative, standing up for what's right. But these old religions, these old traditions, they don't make they don't make their points by subtlety. They make it on big swaths of color. You're either in or you're out, right? And a person who has perhaps psychological fragility, a person who has 
esteem issues and has access to guns might in those circumstances decide to rectify the situation on a as the, as the police officer did on a really bad day mm -hmm. right? Oh. right um yeah horrible to say but for him that's probably what it was it was a really bad day nothing was going right and he decided to maybe make it right i'm not guessing what's in his head but a better attitude i think towards anyone that's going through not living up to their own standards for goodness is not that you are either worthless and must come to the come to the the healing truth of the lamb of god is more like take one step at a time towards your ideal towards your goal right accept that that progress is not a straight line i mean christy you're you are a therapist you don't tell your people either they're 100 percent. you if you're not first you're last Ricky yeah. Bobby style, right? Yeah, no, I, I was told uh, I was told today that I am a uh, an evangelical for self compassion, uh, which is really <laughs> what we're talking about here. This idea that there is a self critical voice in all of us that says you can't do it, you're not doing it, you fucked up, you're a mess, uh, and that's not an effective teacher. Not nearly as effective as uh, somebody who comes beside you and says, you know, you didn't live up to your ideals today. That makes sense. I can see why you would do that. How can we work together to change that? And you know, the the research on that is huge. I, I definitely want to point everybody listening to uh, to the work of Kristen Neff and, and a number of other places. But uh, to get back to to this on hand, I, I have to point out, Johnny, that the maybe the thin veneer that goes on top of that like spiritual warfare and uh, you know God versus uh, demons and angels and all of this is the pseudoscience of sex addiction oh. which is a, a notion that we've covered on this show to to the best yeah. of our ability but that we can never say enough about uh the too long didn't read is to say very simply you cannot become addicted to sex i don't care i don't care i don't care I've read the studies. I can point you towards the studies. I have pointed you towards the studies and will continue to do so. Yes, sex can be problematic in our lives. Obviously, we're here talking about this each and every single week. We're talking about sex. We're talking about sexuality. Sex is complex and sex can be problematic. So can golf. If you are spending too much money. Oh, we lost if you're Christy. If you're spending too much money on Pushing golf, your relationship on golf. Oh. <laughs> okay, I just kept talking. I wasn't sure if y'all yeah, were still hearing yeah. me or not. <laughs> no, we were not. But <laughs> but we get the. I think that we could all we all got the point. Anything yeah. can become problematic if it becomes a fucking obsession. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're spending all your time on it, if you're spending all your money on it, if it is causing issues in your relationship, like anything can become problematic in those ways. And I get it. If your life is really miserable, if your relationship is deeply unpleasant, if you are terribly unhappy and you get a tiny rush of dopamine every time you buy a new driver... I can see how you could get really roped into that golfer? and find yourself you, deep. Oh, no. Are you a yeah. golfer, Christy? I actually don't know shit about golf. Okay, because he sounded like you knew metaphor. something about golf. <laughs> I feel like you're saying something to me about my D&D minis. I mean, I get a new it's one, a I'm consideration. Like, <laughs> it's a consi but it, it, in any case, <laughs> you are not spending too much time, money, or energy on porn or on sexuality or on sex uh, because you are addicted to it. You may be struggling for some other reasons and in some other ways, and I would encourage you to talk to me or some other fine, great, and wonderful therapist, but it's not an addiction, and it's certainly not an excuse to murder innocent people. Piggybacking off right. of Christy, if you do want to spend an absurd amount of money on porn, my only fan's username <laughs> is... <laughs> uh okay sorry i just had to make that joke i just had to sure <laughs> yeah anything can be can get can get you out of whack a absolutely mm -hmm. anything you're right is something is I mean, I mean i think it's boring but it's probably not boring to those who are really into it golf right it's 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 a sport it's it's it's, it's a you know it's a, you can get good at it so it's I hear. a sport <laughs> it's a sport like pool's a sport yeah. i love pool is it a sport it's there should be some other term for it besides it. But <laughs> a competitive right. game. 
We well, all I, know people that read too much, <laughs> like they don't want to exactly. engage, you know, with paying their bills or eating healthy or whatever it is. Life is juggling. Life is always juggling. And maybe you choose to juggle with less balls. Today's Thursday, if you want to. Um, but truth be told, like if you if you're if you're favoring one thing to the exclusion of all others, I have a friend, wonderful friend who is an artist, a professional artist who mm. told me recently uh, like a real artist, not like a trust fund kid who like paints on the side, <laughs> but like a real artist who busts her ass to like make a living off of it. And even she pursuing something that is beautiful and skilled and is advancing like the world of beauty around her. She's like, I worked too much in, in 2019. I missed out on a lot of stuff. You know, I should have stopped and smelled the roses. Um, it's good advice for anybody at any time, I think. Yeah. Step back. Well, and, and there is certainly a lot more to say about this topic. And for that reason, I'm going to continue to point people towards the nonprofits. Uh, the episode in which y'all discussed this, I felt had some really, really beautiful and important points. Uh, for now, I do want to make sure to uh, to take one last caller before we tackle our, our last article and, and wrap things up for the night. Uh, but I... I guess I just don't want to get too far away from saying that when we create these narratives around sex as something that is out of your control, as something that is either in addiction uh, or pathologize it in a medical sense in that way, or when we create these ideas that your body is being tormented by literal demons that are outside of your power, Suddenly, your personal responsibility starts to evaporate. And when you convince yourself that you're not responsible for your own actions, your actions can become terribly, terribly grisly. And while this may be a very extreme example of that, I think we all know that this is a extreme example that is becoming more and more and more normalized. And uh, it, it's exhausting to hear. 